And so he was part of the Voice of Healing movement. There were several men involved in that. And when he would do his meetings, he would often have somebody else do the preaching. But when it came time to exercise that healing again, William Branham would come up and be like, let's go, baby. He laid hands and man, people just got healed so easily. Raised, raised the dead a few times. Not just once or twice, a few times. Crazy heal, healings happened through his ministry. But he admitted that he loved God and he loved the gifts, but he didn't spend enough time in the Word. As a result, he gets into all this faulty doctrine. Now, he had a guy with him by the name of Lindsay that kept him grounded. Because he was the work guy. He was the preacher. And William was coming up to lay hands, right? But once Lindsay left him, once they had that breakup, then he got into all this stuff and said, I want to be a teacher now. And it's like, brother, you don't read the word. So his ministry ends sort of tragically. And so we're doing mentorship. We're doing our school ministry word based Not off of, here's my experience. Right? Right? And so I'm excited when, when people get up here because I know no. that's what we've been doing. We've been teaching people the word and doing some training in the process. So with that said, God, I pray for Jack as he comes up here. God, that you would be with him, that you would guide him, that he would experience your peace, and that would be easy as he flows. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Peter could 
couldn't get loose anyway. Even if he tried, if Peter tried to go somewhere else, he could. So he's pretty much bound up in chains. But Peter was in prison physically. But I want to talk about today too. Not only do people end up in prison physically, but they also end up in prison on the inside too. Yeah. Yes. Oh, Jesus. Herod put Peter in prison. Satan also wants to put people in prison too. Mm, yeah. mm. Satan doesn't like us because if you have the Holy Ghost on the inside of you, and if you're going to try to advance the kingdom of God, Satan's going to try and do something to you. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Bitterness. Mm. How many of us, if we don't watch ourselves, the Bible says to examine yourself. Examine where you're at in the faith. How many times have we had to watch us up before we have any, any kind of bitterness happen inside of us? Yeah. I have to do that. I'm sure Pastor Brian has to do that too. Because if you're sure of things in the kingdom of God down here, Satan's going to be watching you. He's been watching Christians for thousands of years. Yeah. He is deceitful. Right. Yes. Depression, anxiety, fear, yeah. defeat. Guilt and shame. How many times does Satan want to try to bring your sin up to you about what you did yesterday? Yeah. Mm. How did you do last night? Mm. Mm. We see that. Mm. We, guess we can also combat it too. The Bible says to put on the full one of God. Thank God. Amen. They may be able to stand in the evil day, having done all to stand. But we see that Herod put Peter in prison, and Satan wants to try to do the same thing to us. And I want to share a little story with you that only very uh, few people know in my life, even close, really close people, about two or three people. I'm going to be as transparent and honest as I can, but I believe back in 2006, no, I'm sorry, that's when I gave my life to Christ. 2010, October 26, 2010, um, I believe that I started to get tormented by a demon. Back on October 26, 2010, my older cousin tried to commit suicide, tried to hang himself in the bathroom. That night before, I knew something was wrong with him, and he started to talk to me about how some people were picking on him. He was a freshman, I was a junior. I had one class with him, we had Act 2. And so, something was troubling him, and he told me some people were picking on him. And I started to talk to him, I said, man, don't worry about that. I said, man, I said you know the truth. I said, it doesn't matter what people think. I didn't have really much friends growing up myself, but I mean, it really doesn't matter. But I didn't know it was as big of a deal as it was. I really didn't. I just tried to, you know, I was here for him. If he needed someone to talk to, I would talk to him. Right. But I just told him, said, don't worry about it. But I didn't know. I woke up in the middle of the night, my mom told me, she said, Jack, Shane tried to hang himself in the bathroom. And that night, Praise God, my grandpa knew something was up. He seen something different. Uh, it had to be the Lord. And so he was watching him, and when he noticed when the bathroom's been shut for a while, he started to break open the door. And he tore the door down, and he got to him. Praise God, he got to him on time, on time and he's still here today. He has to say that And my older cousin has a calling on his life. But he had a mark around his neck. He is faced with blue. Praise God, I didn't see his face. I didn't really didn't want to. But I'll be honest with you, and I can't tell you why. I mean, I can tell you why, but for some reason, when that happened, it affected me too mentally. Mm -hmm. I can't tell you why. Mm -hmm. the, the, like, the details of it, like the details how a battery actually works, I can't tell you how it works. It just works. But for some reason, when he tried to kill himself, it affected me in some way for some reason that I started to have thoughts of suicide myself. Mm -hmm. I didn't have answers. I didn't know how to answer it. Now, when, now, like I just said, I gave my life to Christ in 2006. I was following the Lord. I felt I failed two grades, fourth grade, fifth grade. When I saw following the Lord, sixth grade, I passed sixth grade. Praise <laughs> God. But during that summertime, I fell away from the Lord. I'm going to do this without the Lord. And so I was outside of the will of God for the enemy to do anything he wanted to do to me. I wasn't close to the Lord. I, you know, I wasn't staying in the word. I wasn't staying in prayer. That's open doors for the enemy to come in. So when this happened,
happened in 2010, there was doors open of what I believe the demon to come and torment me. I started to have thoughts of suicide myself. I was so in fear, just like we just read right here, in fear. Fear, fear likes to grip people. That's what Satan lives on, this fear, causing fear in people's lives. And so for some reason, I started to have thoughts of suicide myself. I can't tell you why. I was so gripped in fear, the fact that if I heard anything as such as evil, I thought out it was going to happen to me too. I can't watch for a while. I don't like my French father. Anyway. <laughs> my mind might go on. <laughs> but I was, I was so gripped in fear that people did not notice this. That when I was going to school, see, I did a song called Capacity. And some of the lyrics in it, it says, walking in quietness but chaotic on the inside. Nobody even knows or understands that when I was going to school, I was having thoughts of suicide. And like I said, if I heard something as something as demonic as evil, I thought it was going to happen to me. That if I heard something about someone killing somebody, why would it pop into my mind about want to murder someone, else, murder someone else? I was being tormented for demon up from like October to 2011 until summertime. That's a long time to be walking in chaos. And no one knew that on the inside, I was going through a lot of stuff. Well, I'm here to tell you today that you can be delivered too if you're going through the same thing. God. Yeah. Amen. Amen. No one knew that. No one knew that. And sometimes when you just, when people are going through this, you're like this. And you're bound up and you can't move. You're walking, but you're walking like this on the inside. That's right. Like you ain't like you wouldn't decide the stuff. You're walking like that. It's true, it happens today, it still happens today. Not just physically, but it happens to Christians today. Yeah. Even if you're not a Christian, there's people out there that go through that, that walk through that, that walk with that, and you don't know it because they don't tell no one. Yeah. Why would why would you want to tell that one? So that to someone, and then you're going to have the, the pants, you're going to put them on the psych ward and everything, and Jesus can set you free. Yes. Amen. Jesus is the healer. He can, he's a chain breaker. Yeah. And he can yeah. break them chains yeah. off you, yeah. because that's what he does, because that's who he is. He is love, and he loves you, and he wants to break that off from you. Yes. Hmm. What happens is, when we allow that to happen, Satan hinders us. He hinders us. It delays us. Satan likes to delay and he likes to hinder us yeah. from what we are called to do. Yeah. We have callings on our lives. Mm -hmm. When you accept Christ, you have a calling. He already has a calling in life from the beginning of time. But once you accept him, then you become the knower. So, oh God, you want me to be a pastor? Okay. You want me to be an evangelist? Okay. Well, maybe you just want me to hold up the form of Moses. Okay. It doesn't matter. Being faithful to the Lord. And that's why the Bible says that John 10, 10, when the enemy comes to kill, still and destroy. He wants to destroy you. Yep. If he can't try to destroy you, he'll try to delay you. Yep. Yep. If he can't try to delay you, he'll try to steal something away from you. Come on. Because that's who he is. Yep. Yes, he is. He was even from the beginning. Let's read on. Acts chapter 7. I'm sorry, 12, verse 7 to 11. Now behold, an angel of the Lord stood by him. And light shone in the prison. And he struck Peter on the side and raised him up, saying, Arise quickly, and his chains fell off his hands. Again, he's a chain breaker. Yes. Then the angel said to him, Gird yourself and tie your sandals. And so he did, and he said to him, Put on your garment and follow me. And so he went out and followed him, and did not know that what was done by the angel was real, but thought he was seeing a vision. When they were past the first and the second guard was, they came to the iron gate that leads to the city, which opened to them of its own accord. And they went out and went down one street, and immediately the angel departed from him. And when Peter had come to himself, he said, Now I know the servant, for the Lord has sent this angel, and has delivered me from the hand of Herod and from all the expectations of the Jewish people. We see in God's grace's action right here that God delivered Peter from prison. 
Because God is a deliverer. Because he sent his angels. Yeah. We see that. Yes. Again, we saw that Peter was in between two guards chained up in prison. And where is he at now? He's outside of the prison wondering what just happened. But what happened was real. <laughs> That's right. But I want to show you something. Peter was faithful. Yes. Yeah. Peter was, if, if a normal person, if they end up in prison, they're going to be wondering, well, what's going to happen? We're going to die? Then, well, how are we going to get out of here? We know that Paul then was singing praises to the Lord in, in prison. But let's see right here how Peter was faithful. Let's go to Mark. First of all, what was Peter, what was Peter doing in the beginning? What was Peter doing in the beginning? He was sleeping. Peter was sleeping in prison. Like I just said, naturally, when someone's probably in prison, they're probably scared, they're probably worried. What was Peter doing? He's sleeping. <laughs> <laughs> he said, I ain't got time to stress me. He said, look, regardless if I live, I'll be with the Lord. I mean, if I live, I'm here. He's got purpose to If I die, I'll be with the Lord. They don't matter. <laughs> But Peter was sleeping. He wasn't worried about anything. He wasn't letting nothing bother him. He was exhibiting his faith by just sleeping. We can read in Mark chapter 4, verse 37. It reads this. And a great windstorm arose, and the waves beat the boat, so that it was already filling. But he was in the stern, what? Jesus asleep on the pillow. While there was a storm... And all these other, all these other the disciples, they were saying, Lord, don't you don't care that we perish? And Jesus, like, I'm trying to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> but Peter learned this from his master. Peter spent time with Jesus. When Jesus was asleep in, the, in, the, in a storm, guess what Peter was doing? Well, I watched my master sleep in the middle of a storm. I'm going to sleep here too. <laughs> then he arose. And Jesus, said, and Jesus rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Peace, be still. And the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. But he said to them, Why are you so fearful? How is it that you have no faith? I'm telling you, Jesus with you in your storm. Yes. Yeah. Jesus with you. The Bible says, He would never leave you nor forsake you. Being confident of this very thing. Yeah. That he who has begun a good work with you, and you will complete it until the day of Christ. Yeah. He keeps his promise. He's a promise keeper. Yeah. He's a way maker. Yeah. He's a miracle worker. Yeah. He can still deliver us from our prisons today. Hmm. Here's what I believe the Lord wanted me to say to you. If we go back into verse 39, it says this. Then he arose and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Peace be still. And the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. How many of you needed just a great calm in your life? Oh, yeah. People go on vacations to a beach to get a great calm. They go to a nice house and ain't no wrong there. But I'm just saying. If you don't know Jesus, you're not going to know a great calm. Come on. Yeah. Amen. Or you can't teach it because the Bible says that he is peace. He became peace. That when we are in our storms, then we can have that peace. We can be in that. I'm not saying everything's going to be taken away from you, which you can. But what I'm saying is, is you can learn to have that great calm while you're in the storm. Amen. Amen. Just a great, <laughs> let everything just go. Let me go to the beach. Let me just watch the waves. Stay there for five seconds and make me fall asleep. <laughs> Peter was in prison, but he was still faithful. Daniel chapter 3, verse 16. It reads this Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And said to the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we have no need to answer you in this matter. If that is the case, our God, whom we serve, is able to deliver us from the burning fairy furnace, and he will deliver us from your hand. Verse 21. Then these men were bound in their coats, their trousers, their turbans, and, the, and their other garments, and were cast into the midst of a burning fairy furnace. Verse 24. Then King Nebuchadnezzar was astonished, and he rose in haste, and spoke, saying to his counsel, Did we not cast great men bound in the midst of a fire? They answered, said to the king, O true king, Look 
hands, I see four men loose, walking in the midst of the fire, and they were not hurt, and the form is a form that's like the Son of God. Just like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were gone us tonight, and they were delivered or not, Peter was the same way, exhibiting his faith. But guess what? God delivered him, and God delivered Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego too, and that shows that he's with you in a fire too. He's with you in a storm too, and that he can deliver you today. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Ain't nothing stopping him either. The Bible says nothing's too hard for God. <laughs> nothing's impossible for God. Yeah. Even the smallest, sometimes, man, sometimes, man, some, some of the littlest things are just like, oh, God. Oh, I spilled my coffee today. <laughs> <laughs> Faithless, God remains faithful. Amen. 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 